many of y'all want to eat some groceries for the next few moments, okay? All right. Well, look at the screen there. Isn't that beautiful? You know, when you eat the word, your thought, your whole body changes the more word you eat. And some of you like, uh, you know, coffee, like us. We're still learning. There's got to be a coffee in heaven. In fact, water, I believe, was really invented so you could make coffee. <laughs> That's part of it. Now, you don't like coffee and do the medical thing. You don't want coffee. That's fine. But Miss Rosella and I like coffee, don't we? Do you know in 47 years of marriage to this lady over here, she has never drank one cup of coffee with me. She's held my cup lots of times because she was cold and her hands would be cold. She's a tea drinker. Now, she's specific on her tea drinking that she wants to do, so don't just give her any old tea bag. Okay? Anyway. Yeah. But I say that to say there's a lot of good things that God's got in store for every one of us. Now, today I want to talk to you about one little word, thoughts. In fact, right now when I said the word thoughts, you thought of something, but it was more of a reaction than a thought. I'm going to go real deep on you real quick, okay? There are 20 thousand to fifty thousand thoughts that you have every day now twelve thousand of them are things you could maybe remember but thoughts are movements in your brain trying to get you aware of consciousness to be here the Bible tells us in the Old Testament my thoughts aren't your thoughts saith the Lord Okay? He thinks higher than you and I do, right? But here's the deal. You and I know something about what God is about because Jesus came to the earth bodily, physically, and said, I'm come that you might have life and have life more abundantly. The enemy comes to do what? Still kill and then he comes to steal the word the thought or put one in here your thoughts the devil never knows what you're thinking till you open this you open your mouth and he'll know what you're thinking I'm telling you my arthritis oh yeah I got him my arthritis it's hurting me my feet are killing me oh I'm not going to have to steal I can just kill him with her feet That's a thought. Because once you speak it, it has a seed value to it. It goes and does things in your life. So I want us today to think about thoughts. And I'm going to talk about thinking about thinking in a minute. And the thoughts that you should be thinking instead of wondering what time is it when I can go to lunch. I'll stop there. But (laughs) how 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 is your day going so far? Great. 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 Beautiful. Wonderful. Blessed. Blessed. Amazing. Amazing. Oh, she's on the front row. (laughs) Amazing. Anybody else? Poke your neighbor and say he's talking to you right now, okay? (laughs) Blessed. Any other? Happy. Happy? Fabulous. Fabulous. Joyful. 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 Aw. Your face says it. (laughs) You're a joyful person. Well, here's the thing. We've got to come as believing believers to take the time to spend more time with Jesus to figure out what the right thoughts are. Do you notice that many times when Jesus did the ministry part of what he did, now he obviously talked about things all the time. He was hanging around fishermen. Fishermen tell stories. Fishermen know... I always tell you a story that, you know, they, my fish was this wide, this big, you know. It, it was that, but really it's that big, you know. <laughs> Fishermen are always telling things. And he listened to them. He was a carpenter. He was the son of a carpenter, but he was a carpenter. He knew how to build things. See a piece of wood and build something out of it. But fishermen can tell stories. But oftentimes when Jesus did ministry... He didn't go into a long theological thing about who his father was. He just said the right words for that moment. Be healed. Hello? 
when you, it is all you need if you can back it up with that's what you've been thinking on the inside. Yes, sir. You see, when we encourage you to say the words, I'm healed, you say them, I'm healed. You see, they really don't mean anything unless that's what you've been thinking. That's what you put in your heart. That's what's in there. See, I, when I, the first day I really got to be husband to Miss Cheryl, while we were getting married, I, I, our recording days, I told her, honey, you're my, you, you're, you're my main squeeze. She went, bap, I am your only squeeze. Let's correct that right now. You see, out of her came the concept that I wasn't just some man in her life. When I say I'm the heel, it's not, quote, I just believe it. It's down in there. It's the only thing I can say. Have you ever started using your mouth without thinking? Somebody told me that the other day. They, uh, I was in a place with them, and we walked in together, and we were standing there, and, and this person just suddenly said something in front of another person. I said, wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. But that, that's the wrong thing to say and the wrong time to say it. Yeah. He looked at me. Well, my, my mouth started talking before I started thinking. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, so if we're going to spend more time with Jesus, we also have to spend more time in the Spirit praying. Jesus took a lot of time to pray with the Father. Do you think he knew the Father? Of course. But what did he do? He spent time with the Father, refreshing himself, not doing a lot of talking, but doing a lot more listening. I took a road trip yesterday uh, for a couple hours, and, but I had a lot of time in the car, turning the music off. I turned the teaching off. I just had a lot of time to watch the neighborhood and the, the highway I was on and just think. You know, I'd drift over here, drift over there. Then I'd think, I'm going to talk to that driver up there. He's not doing what he should be. I'm going to just, I'll just tell him a few things right now. And then it would arrest me. He can't hear me. <laughs> what are you doing, stupid? <laughs> he never heard it. I never said it, actually, but I thought it. Hello? Yeah. So we have to expand prayer time. Amen? If we want to get along with Jesus. Prayer is the greatest wireless connection you could ever get a hold of. Amen. I don't care where. It doesn't fail. Wherever you are, prayer will work if you'll just be quiet enough. People come here many times. Oh, pastor, I've got I to gotta have a word with you. I just need you to pray for me. Because I blew it. Well, Jesse helped me again with that one years ago. Admit it, quit it, and move on. Stop it. Miss <laughs> Cheryl's not telling you some fib, some fabricated story. And she came home and told me, and I went, oh, Lord, <laughs> about our son. <laughs> Wonderful time, though, in our lives. We knew what he was destined for when he was born. Right. And we didn't back away from that. The father knew what his son was destined for, the prodigal, the faithful father and the prodigal son. He was out there looking for his boy to come home any day. And when he got home, he didn't just chew him out. Who do you, what have you been doing? You, blah, blah, blah. He said, welcome home. I got stuff for you. Oh, I'll take anything. I'll just put me out with it. No, the father loved on him. And prayer will put you in that spot. Amen. Here's another thing. The word tells us in Philippians, the message translation, don't fret or worry instead of worrying. So when you come, even before God, don't come with a worry attitude. God, I'm really concerned about this. God, what am I going to do? It's in the word. Receive the healing. Amen. Let petitions, praises, shape your worries into prayers. Letting God know your concern for things. The Passion Bible, which I, I love the the reading of it, theologically, maybe it's a little weaker for you, but I think it gets it in our vernacular so you can understand some things. Don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. 
Isn't that where your thoughts go? Yeah, but I'm concerned. I got this thought about what if. No, be saturated in prayer throughout the day, offering your faith-filled requests before God with overflowing gratitude. Tell Him every detail of your life. Can I persuade you if you haven't gotten there yet? The day you repented to God is not the day He found out about your sin. Hello. Oh, I just need to repent. I need to tell somebody. Listen, God already knew it. Just go there first. Now, that does not give you the license, quote, to sin. You don't need a license to sin. You do it anyway. It's your flesh. You need to get your flesh under control. Amen? Thirdly, the thing we've got to do is lay aside all the stuff that's been bothering you. It's amazing to me we can't get Christians who've been Christians for some years to grow better than they're doing simply because they drag that baggage around with them all the time. You got to let loose of that stuff. Lay aside all the hurts, useless traditions, spiritual fat that are causing us to resist change. How many of you all used to go to a, a, a religion? Well, I won't say it even that way. How many of you all, I'll just say a couple of denominations, abomination names, okay? No, no. Say <laughs> religious. There we go. Uh, how many of you all were raised uh, as a Catholic? Not me, but, but it's okay. I, I could have been. Okay, there are certain traditions there that really are just not working like they could be. Okay? Right. right? Now, I was raised Baptist. We didn't know there was anything but maybe a few Methodists. We didn't trust the Presbyterians, and we didn't know anything about the Pentecostals. But you know what? The day I got saved, I became a Pentabab or a Baptocostal. Who <laughs> Baba? But I was raised in abominational thinking, not that the Baptists are all wrong heavens. They got more people saved than, than exist, I think, you know? I mean, they, and you know, they, they're wonderful at knocking on doors and talking to people and taking them down the Roman road, you know, and, and all of those things. But you and I have to, have to realize that tradition can hold you back from a fresh move of God. Let loose of it. Even in word of faith circles, we do a lot of confession. That's great. But what are we trying to do is trying to get your thinking to where you're flowing with the spirit of grace. Amen. And you need to be. Because life doesn't work outside of the spirit of God. You're just, if you depend on your flesh, it is going to be flesh and pride that carry you through life, and those two don't know how to do it. Tell me your flesh knows how to do it. It'll lie to you. And pride will lie to you. Well, who do they think they are telling me that? And I'll tell you, I'll just stay home all the time. Well, that's the way the fire goes out. A wolf knows if he can separate somebody from the pack, get them alone, he can get them. That's why during pandemic, do your best not to surrender just to the norm conversation of the day. We got to be careful. We can't be around each other. Are you kidding me? You think this is the first pandemic God's ever seen? He dealt with worse than this because the Israelites walked from, away from him. Curses came, not that God sent them, but curses came. He had to deal with them and has dealt with them with us. Amen. Glory to God. All right, lay aside those hurts. Amen? You got me there? Okay. Now, horrible word I'm facing before your eyes right now. Because the older we get, the less we want to change. Change is not change until there's change. Well, I'm thinking about changing. I'm, well, that's all you're doing is thinking about it. See, it has to get into the... Faith without works is dead. There has to be an action component to it. So there's this battle in your mind up here, and this is where I want to focus on for the moment. Your mind can think all of these thoughts somewhere, what did I say, uh, jeepers, around 50,000. But there's a National Science Foundation that say it, says that 70 to 80 percent of your thoughts are negative. And that's scary. 70 to 80 percent of your, of, of your thought life is negative. I don't mean... You know, perverted, it's just wrong. 
It's just off kelter. Well, I was thinking, well, and there it is. Constant change is here to stay. You've got to keep growing. Proverbs, death and life are where? In the power of the tongue. How does the tongue start to speak? Because of a thought. Amen? Message says, words kill, words give life. They're either poison or, the, or fruit. You choose. The words you choose is what you use to live your life. How you see yourself is how you think about yourself. When you get up in the morning and look in the mirror, what are you thinking? Well, another day. Another bit of this, you know. <laughs> you could lose weight, but then you got this thing down here, and around Thanksgiving, that's a bad deal. <laughs> you know, if you have too, too much of that around Thanksgiving. The Passion says, your words are so powerful that they will kill or give life. The talkative person will reap the consequences. Now, I know I'm doing all the talking this morning, and you're listening, but I've got a point to get you to, Okay. The Word tells us in Romans 12, too. How many of you, by the way, follow occasionally on Facebook my morning thing? Miss Cheryl does saying, oh, praise God. Yes, Gene, I see you often mornings. He gets coffee with me early morning. But I shared this, I think, yesterday or the day before. Don't, it's scripture, Romans 12, too. Don't, be, don't conform any longer to the pattern of the world, but be transformed. Transformation is something that has to come in every one of us at a point. You have to decide that you're going to be transformed by the inside, not from the outside, but by on the inside. And you have to decide that you're going to keep your mouth ready to engage, but not open it till you've had the thought corrected and filtered by the Word of God. Amen. Just don't say anything that's, that's stupid. Stacy, who sings up here, he and I have had this conversation many times. You can't fix stupid except with duct tape. Put duct tape on there and that'll fix a lot of stupid. Mark Twain, do you all remember him at all? Okay. It is better to keep your mouth closed and let people think you are a fool than to open it and remove all doubt. Amen. <laughs> Some years ago, uh, Miss Cheryl and I, when we went to Texas, we met so many people to, to, after starting work with Brother Copeland in 79 and through the 90s, we, into the 90s, we had met Jerry Savelle, a number of the major pastors and teachers and all. But one of them that we connected with and went and did concerts with was Edwin Lewis Cole. He was the founder of the men's movement before Promise Keepers. He's just a wonderful guy and uh, just a lot of fun, a former Methodist pastor. But he would say the, the neatest little uh, sentences. You know, I love when somebody crafts a sentence and it's, it's just right. He, he, he said, you know, he, he said that this is one. It won't be on the wall. But he said, life is composed of your choices and constructed by your words. So you make a choice. I'm going to serve Jesus. And then I talk Jesus' words. I'm going to serve me. And then you talk your words. Hello? Well, I, uh, I'm, I only live one life. No, you, you, you've got a long one life to live. Not just what's on here on the earth. This is just preparation time. Don't think I'm getting old and life's over. No, it isn't. You, you're going to slide into heaven and say, is that all there was? What are we going to do now? Hello? Live to the fullest, but complete your assignment here. Okay, back to Ed Cole. We would go on these events with him. And what, what got Miss Cheryl and I, we would be doing music. And he would be animated during the music. Okay? Do you all know what animated during the music is? Ask Miss Becky over here. She can tell you a dance studio. It means you move some part of your body, okay? You know? Well, he would get up there, and during the middle of the music, he, would, he had this pile of Frisbees and would throw them out in the audience, and people would be catching them. They'd make them jump, you know? I mean, it was all wild and crazy. 
But I saw and heard him back then, and I captured it for you this morning to help you know how critical it is for you to think right. You do have an enemy. You know that, don't you? Amen. How many of you can name your enemy? Satan. Satan. Yeah. The devil. The devil. Beelzebub. Who else? It's not your mother-in-law. Lucifer. Any other names? Come on. Pardon? The fallen angels. Yeah. The liar. The deceiver. Loser. Well, let me help you here. Let me help you. Your best friend and worst enemy are both in the room right now. It's not your neighbor right or left. It's not God or the devil. It's you. See, your thoughts matter to the success of your life. Well, I, if I had Brother Benny Hinn to pray for me, if I could get Brother Copeland to pray for me, if I could get uh, Fred, pray, oh no, Fred's already in heaven. Can't get him to pray. You know, who am I going to have pray for? No, it's your mouth. It, and your mouth opens when the thoughts are, you know, right or wrong. It is what you are saying. Amen. The first enemy you got to deal with is see you dealt with. And the only way that happens is you look in the mirror. I am the redeemed of God. I am who you said I am. I don't care what my flesh says. I'm shutting up to that. I'm a world overcomer. I have the joy of the Lord on my inside. The blood of Jesus has covered my body. I am the healed. Body, you got to get in line. Feet, you can't kill me anymore. Back, you can't hurt me anymore. You have to decide on your inside conversation who you are in Christ Jesus based on the word of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. We can change our thoughts by knowing who we are in Jesus. Amen. And we got to get up to that level no matter what you're And you have to stay there. Yes. Well. Amen. Uh, y'all have heard me or, or read it in my book uh, about certain musicians. And, and Phil was an and he is a very interesting, deep musician. He is a worshiper, worshiper. But when you get him alone, he's not talking about his Grammy Awards. He's not talking about all the stuff he's gotten done. He's talking about a world of sound that is way on out there. You see, you hear between 20 to uh, 20,000 hertz. Okay, the bass is the low end, and then the high end, and then the, you know, you're way on up there. <laughs> way on up there, okay? Go ahead, give me a high A. <laughs> but you know, there are higher frequencies than that. Your ear was made to hear certain frequencies, but there's higher frequencies. Your eyes work between, uh, 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 let me get the number right. They work seven octaves above what the highest note is over here. Your eyes, nerves, receive information of frequencies. Frequencies. God works with a frequency. He is sound. He is light. Amen. Help me out. You're sitting in a chair that's made of metal, but if we get the frequency right on the metal, the chair won't hold you anymore. It'll melt. It'll take another frequency. Amen. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. I mean, so on your inside, the frequency that's coming out of you had best be Jesus. Oh, yeah. You are in Him and He is in you. Amen. I just don't feel it. You don't have to feel it. Hallelujah. Amen. How would you like somebody walking around feeling you all day long? No, you, He is there. <laughs> you have to be sure He's there. Are y'all with me? Okay. Let me take you down this spot and then we'll find a landing place. Maybe we can come back Wednesday. Yeah, we could. Because you'll be teaching, right? No, you'll be having a guest. That's right. Philippians 4. Get a breath of air and read it out loud, okay? Ready? Read. Do you understand the word rejoice? And do you understand the word again? Okay, let's do it again. Let's see what happens. Go. 
Well, he didn't say that so you could read it. What about if I told Cheryl when we first married, I love you? And she said, well, I'd like to hear that again. Well, I told you once. No, the rejoicing takes more than... So we'll do it one more time and see what happens in here. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice, rejoice. Rejoice! Rejoice! On my inside, I start rejoicing! Hallelujah! The next verse, and this is Paul's writing from the biggest book in the Bible with the most joy in it. In prison, he wrote it. Most of you, if you'd been in prison, Pastor, can you get me out? Bail me out if you can, okay? You know, or if you're in a prison in a, in a you know, relationship, you know, help me get out. No, listen. Rejoice where you're at. Ms. Cheryl and I pastored a church in Daytona Beach with a 22,000 square foot building with four to 500 folks, you know, seats in the sanctuary and all, and had a great choir, size choir. And then we moved over here and we connected with Pastor Rosella and she uh, together, and this is as far as we got. It's not really. This is just the, the first aid team, the, the top team, the, the core group team that are ready to explode. Amen? Because we all have to be on the same page. But we did that and we learned from over there to over here, regardless of what's going on, you go ahead and rejoice. This one, this book and these verses, watch them now. That, that one said, what? Rejoice in the Lord. The next verse said, and he didn't write them in verses. Be careful for how much? But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be known unto God. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 7 and the peace of God. Do you know peace is probably the wonder, one of the most wonderful things that you can hold with you day or night anywhere driving a car being in a storm being you know, chewed out by a policeman. I didn't get stopped yesterday. Or the day before. In fact, it's been years. I'm on four wheels. <laughs> but peace is something you can have anytime, anywhere. Amen. Despair is not of God. Disease is not of God. Discouragement is not of God. You got to press in and take peace. Just grab it and possess it. Peace which passes all your thinking shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. I love this verse. But I really, 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 really got stirred in my heart to talk to you today on thoughts, thinking about this next verse. Finally. Now he's written chapter 1, 2, 3, and 4, and five. finally he said, all that's important, but finally, here's the deal. Whatsoever things are true. When somebody comes up to you with a prayer request like, well, I'm really concerned for so-and-so, you know, they've been in real, uh, well, they've just been out of sorts, and I'm really concerned for them. And they tell you too many details. That's not prayer requests, that's gossip. I don't need to know the details of your circumstance. I just need to know where we're going to get in agreement at. Hallelujah. I, was, yeah. I wrote somebody, a covenant member here at the church the other day, and I said, I don't need to know all the details about an operation. What I need to know is what verse are you and I going to agree on and stay with it. I mean, I remember being with Gene and Becky, and they gave Becky a bad report. And I'm looking at the doctor and says, well, that ain't going to work. She's a believer. <laughs> you got the wrong candidate for that one. That ain't going to work. You know what? She was prepared for it. She didn't turn to Gene and go, what am I going to do? She, always, he, she was set. You see, the truth is, you are redeemed now. 
And you can have all the benefits of being redeemed now. And you can walk in it. You can, you can live in it. You can press on to life in it. But you have to stay at it. Change has to come up here. The thoughts, those thousands and thousands, you get melted into an action. Whatever things are true, whatever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things of a good report. I used to say it all the time around here and over in Daytona. First time I'd see a, a member of welcome them at the door, give me a good report. When Pastor Andrew came in today, hadn't seen him all week, first thing I said, give me a good report. I want to know what's going on with Miss Leba. And it's a good report, by the way. Hallelujah. You can clap for that. It's a good report. <laughs> Is there any virtue? If there be any praise, think. You, you see, you, you're not going to get very far with God. Well, I just don't believe that. I, I just, I, well, I know. Well, I've left my mask in there. Ugh. You, you, can't, you can't do that. You can't come up with a theological position to tell me that that verse is wrong. You, there, there isn't one. Amen? So here it is. Whatsoever true, honest, just, pure, lovely of a good report. That's what I'm staying with. That's what I'm staying with. That's what I'm staying with. Amen. Your thinking, you see, becomes words. And when the words come out, they plant a wall around you. They, they drag the outside to the place around you that it fences you in. That's why forgiveness is such a big deal to God. You forgive others. You're no longer in bondage to that. You don't forgive others. You drag that with you. Yeah, but they hurt me. I know. So? They crucified Jesus. And he didn't say an ugly word about any of them. The only time he said something part looking was when he dealt with some stupid religious Pharisees. Get out of here. That's, what not, that's not what my house is for. Amen? Glory to God. So your words, your thinking becomes the words that are used. So you have to decide what you're going to think about. And I'll close it. I will. Tell you what, sis, you can help me. Take me to down to 84, would you? Thank you. Hallelujah. There you go. There you go. <laughs> uh, you took me too far. 64. <laughs> 64. <laughs> Thank you. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on. Okay. There we go. Thank you. Miss Cheryl, do you remember a pastor by the name of Neil Myers from Australia? He came several times. I saw this comment the other day, and I think it's one that we need to just put into your thinking right now. He said this, every cell of your body is eavesdropping on your thoughts. Your body's responding to your thoughts, so we have to renew our mind. Your body, when you start thinking these little things, well, I wonder if, maybe if I did this. Man. Now, it doesn't mean we don't think, but we have to filter the thinking through the right kinds of thoughts because your body's going to respond to whatever it is you're thinking. If you think you're going to be broke the rest of your life and you're going to live in poverty because your parents were that way, I'm you, I've had to work that one out of me. Amen. Sometimes I save gum wrappers. Well, not really. I, I save coat hangers. My, my closet's full of coat hangers. My, my, my closet has some shirts that I wore in college. Is that true? I keep saying, when I get back to that weight. And somebody said, you need to get in shape. I said, well, Garfield said, round is a shape. <laughs> I'm not overweight, I'm under tall. <laughs> Stretch me out and I do good. 
But every cell of your body is eavesdropping on what you're thinking about. That's why sometimes your mouth will get engaged before you think. Because you've been thinking on so much, that's how you react. We've got to move past that. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. I'll, I'll do this, and I really am closing. you got to stay in the road and not the ditches. Yes. Being a believing believer means there are a lot of things. Well, let's go. We'll just stand and pray in the Holy Ghost for hours. Well, I think Pray and Hyde said it, and even Youngie Cho may have said it. Sometimes we pray too much. Miss Linda said the other day, hey, it's not the time for praying, it's the time for saying. We declare into the atmosphere. We need to declare some things into the atmosphere, not just, oh God, oh God, help the Democrats, help the Republicans. No. We declare our right, our nation serves God. Righteousness exalts this nation. There'll be righteous people in Washington. Amen. Amen. What do you need a fence around the very seat of the greatest democracy ever, the greatest nation ever? You got a fence around it, and you won't put a fence down the border where people are coming in to take all your money and all your stuff. You wouldn't do that at your house. You don't do that. How many of you have a lock on the front door? How many of you have a screen door and you just leave the screen door flop? No. I was raised when you left the screen door unlatched from the inside as if a latch would hold it shut. Rip that thing off. Well, here's the deal about roads. You stay in the road, not the ditches. Ditches. A bend in the road's not the end of the road unless you fail to make the turn. And if you fail to make the turn, things will happen. The highways have ditches on them. Amen. And there you go. Get your thought life right. Believe God. Miss Charity, take me to our wonderful confession. Glory to God. How many did you got? You, did you get anything out of this this morning? Amen. Come on, help me out a little bit. Come on. Come on, just a little bit, John. Repent. <laughs> Turn to your neighbor and say, I like this guy. I hope they have him back. Stand if you would. Ms. Cheryl, thank you and the team this morning. Praise God. Good word today, amen? amen. Thank you, Steve and Jenny. Thank you, Miss Rosella, for being here and reminding us we can do something. Amen. We can do something. Amen. And young lady, you better come back. <laughs> On your birthdays. Before your birthday, all right. Well, praise God. Hallelujah. Is your mind clear? Did you get a good word? Is it going to help you think better? My, my son's teacher, third grade teacher, a male teacher, came in the classroom one day and said, Kids, today we're going to think about thinking. And do you know my son reminds me, he was in the third grade, he still reminds me of that sentence. <coughs> he learned it then. Hopefully you'll go home thinking about thinking. Yeah. You know what? Turn the television off. I love TV, but sometimes TV can be television. Yeah. You let commercials persuade you of stuff that is not true. Yeah. Not that you're, they're trying to sell you something. They are. But the mindset of commercials now with two homosexuals, two lesbians oh, being wow. the pictures and trying to tell, oh, it's just normal. No, it isn't. No. So you turn the, that thought process off because it's affecting your thinking. Yes, right. And the news telling you, oh, the COVID's getting worse. It's getting double now worse. I don't care if it gets the worst ever reported everywhere. The worst happening on the world today is sin. And without sin, you will go to an eternal hell. Amen. You need Jesus. Jesus will help you deal with a pandemic. Amen. 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 Say these words with him. Do it with a gusto of air, okay? Hallelujah. I am a believer, not a doubter. So today, I again boldly declare out of my mouth, God has great plans for me. And none of his plans have defeat. So I declare my thoughts are full, full of God's goodness and love. I declare God's best in and on my life. 
I declare these next months of 2021 will be filled with the extraordinary goodness of God. I, the springtime of 2021 is here. Things are so subject to change. Hallelujah. Thoughts, my thoughts are good. Amen. Let's agree that a time of great favor is upon each of our family. Miss Shell told you how to get the favor. There's, there's brochures out there if you want it. You can, uh, those of you watching, you can get it online. Favor, okay? Plenty, okay? It's for you. Amen. Now, I declare there is a great blessing on me, on my family, and on this church. I love this house. I am gladly declare I'm redeemed, and I say so. I'll shout it wherever I go. I absolutely rebuke sickness, disease, poverty, lack, confusion, stress, and despair. I speak life into my family, kids, and grandkids. I choose to live by faith, always walk in love, pray and so so that others can know how wonderful a Savior Jesus is. So I boldly say, I am a believing believer, not a doubt. So I even shout, thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God. Now, Father, I pray over this congregation. For everyone watching right now, I pray. Favor be on you. The wisdom of God flood your thinking. Increase from outside sources come your way. Increase financially, socially, and in every way. Father, and I thank you for wholeness in these bodies. And I declare as a pastor that they will go out of this room today. They'll go out of this fellowship, this, this congregation today. And those of you watching, do the same. Be bold. These are not days to be grumpy and be uh, quiet. Be bold when you're speaking about who Jesus is in your life. Amen, amen. amen.